Hello, hello, and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England stream. As you have seen, I have got some fancy new overlays and stuff. And, well, I say fancy, they're pretty awful. But I figured, you know what, I should try and get a timer overlay. Now, I apologise if it's in the wrong spot. Um, I know it's roughly right, but it might need some fiddling with. Um, but yeah, I've got a great game. It's between EG's In Control and Stoic Regret. Now... Um, Stoic Regret is apparently a big fan of EG in control, can't blame him. EG in control is an amazing player, and he's playing as the blue Protoss player down here on the left position, and Stoic Regret is the red Zerg in the right position, and I mean, EG in control, an absolute great player, and the map is obviously Metalopolis, I mean, I like this map, I am a Zerg player, I feel it's a really, really good map, I mean, there's no rocks blocking thirds. Protoss do have different opinions. You can fast expand on it. EG in control isn't going to be expanding. Going for a forge fast expand rather. Um, because, now the main reason is it can be a bit of a nightmare to get it through there. Purely because you've got this massive area of which to cover. And it's all on a low ground. So if there's any kind of road rush or even speedling run bys. I mean obviously you can't just put a couple of cannons here and block off this area to the nexus because lings can run around the back. Now, see if they're running around the back up here, then all of your probes aren't going to be mining. You're just generally not going to have a fun time. Now, if you go over here, a spawning pool has now just gone down for regret. Now, that was at the 14 supply mark, so fairly standard. This overlord is coming in to scout for anything which could be going on. The um, first gateway and also gas is down for EG in control, so we'll wait and see what happens there. This probe is going to cause a little bit of a nightmare for the drone. I mean, doing a great job of denying the expansion though, so just means until that probe kind of nibbles his way through the probe, nothing will happen, and now the pylon's gone down, which, to be honest, can be expected. Once that pylon's down, it just means you've delayed that hatchery until zerglings are out, and um, that's quite a big hit. I mean, it's sort of 2 minute 50 it went down, and Stoic with Greb was wanting to go for that from kind of about 2 minutes 30, and the probe even coming now with the shields regenerated. But we've got Cybernetics Core on its way now, 4 in control, along with the second gas already up. Chrono Boost is going down on the Nexus, so kind of going economically heavy. May save up some Nexus now, energy, just to kind of Chrono Boost Warp Gate check out. We'll wait and see. But the Zerglings are out now, and 4 is pretty standard. Um, basically, 4 Zerglings allows him to prod, poke, take the Watchtowers, scout around for any proxy pylons. Which is all he really needs. And, of course, this base is now down. These Zerglings, as I said, are probably going to just wander around just to keep an eye out for any form of, you know, proxy pylon, which may be going down because this probe's pulled back up here. And I don't actually think the Zerglings going to scout it, so this was good positioning by In Control. Um, the Chrono Boosts are going down on Warp Gate Tech, so we may actually see a bit of a sneaky um, Warp Gate play, because, I mean, there's no expansion down yet. It could be a three-gate expand, and... A lot of Protosses have gone against doing the three gate expand recently, um, favouring the Forge Fast expand against a Zerg player. But obviously, the downside to that is a Forge Fast expand can be pretty much not safe. You're kind of committing yourself stupid. And actually, no, we're getting a Stargate out right now. Now, a Stargate out at this point is very early. Very, very early. So, we're going to see some very early harassment with air units. I mean, the credit boosts have now stopped on the warp gate tech. The second base is down. There are two queens, but there's absolutely no sign of an evolution chamber yet, so we won't be seeing any form of spore crawlers. I mean, hell, there's no gas taken either. Uh, that was, as I say, two are taken. There's only two gas just starting now, so obviously the rotor on as well, so he's defending up to push against the four warp gate, but obviously he's only got queens to defend. He is getting a third queen out now, which probably a very very good idea so a voidway is getting warp um chrono boosted out now a single voidway can be taken down by a queen and two queens very very easily so he's not in any problems yet but really good follow-up protoss do have is if they take that um voidway and then get two or three phoenixes obviously the phoenixes can lift up the queens and there's nothing the Zerka player can do about it. Although he's getting his evolution chamber down now. So this evolution chamber will obviously allow him to get spore crawlers. He's got the roach warren out. So he can get some roaches pretty quickly. Surprised um, Regret isn't poking in an Alkmore. He 
most certainly could. There's he could just keep his zergling down here because obviously this pylon is a very and now the nexus would just let him know that he's probably not a threat from any kind of four warp gameplay, and that's really what he's potentially gearing up to deal with. Getting the spore cooler down now, so he's pretty safe. There's no spore cooler in the main yet. He's just prepared, and it's a good position to be in. That spore cooler covers him, and as I said, that phoenix has now just started up. Two voidways are on their way in. So the phoenix obviously will catch them up, hopefully, and will get a lift off on one of the queens, but obviously they need to hug the spore cooler just to make sure that they are protected if the lift does go off. But obviously there is this massive space back here, which the voidways can really, really utilise to do maximum damage to the mineral line. And the first phoenix is out on its way now, second one on the way as well, so um, in control is committing quite a lot to getting some good play. And there are the voidways, the queens are there, they're going to do some damage. The voidway just pulling back, waiting for the phoenix to come in. The second phoenix just finishing up now as well. There's going to be quite a few overlord snipes, I mean, um, this is where in control could do a lot of damage. He is looking like he's moving out for a counter attack though. If you come down to the south position, just moving these roaches and zerglings in, which is a good move because, frankly, there's nothing they can do. They're useless um, against their units. So, go in and attack. And one queen already down. The spore caller is doing some damage to the phoenix, who are just picking off overlords. This will actually um, supply block regret now. So, he's got five more overlords on the way, just in preparation for that. And now the roaches, zerglings, this is a big push. Now, this could be very effective, but there's a lot of sentries out, sentries on very high energy, so we can see a lot of force fields come down, and really, force fields are great. There's nothing um, Regret can do about it. And as you can see, they're already dropping down. He is just prepared, dropping the photon cannons in preparation, trapping some zerglings in there. Very, very nice force fields by in control, which is exactly what we would expect. Um, just having a look at the units, he's got quite a few coming in. There's a lot of roaches there, though, and I mean, not much in the way of defence. He is having to pull back the um, Voidway and Phoenixes, so it means he will be able to hold it. He shouldn't actually lose anything, and I mean, those force fields are just beautiful. He's taking no damage at all, but doing, really cleaning this up. But there's a long stream of Zerglings coming in. I mean, ten more Zerglings are on their way. Lair is also on its way now for Stoic Regret. And I mean, all he's lost really was, while I was looking, was a Queen. I mean... I was switching over to this attack because it could have potentially been very dangerous, but now that's all cleared up, if you have a look, he does still have, he has got his third queen back up, he didn't lose that evolution chamber, and if we take a quick look at the units killed tab, um, surprisingly he didn't kill any workers either, so in control his air push really hasn't done too much in the way room, but coming in again now, and to be honest, it's still just a second spore cooler has been put down on a natural, but it's just one spore cooler in the main, and two of the natural and a couple of queens, which obviously with good phoenix usage that could very very easily clean up the queens. So then it's just some spore crawlers, which are much of a threat. There's still a lot of overlords out of position which aren't going to be defended by the um, spore crawlers or the queens. So he could potentially do a lot of damage and potentially supply block regret as well. Just coming out with these phoenixes just to scout around. There is some spore callers going down, but I'd imagine the voidways will target it. They found the queen, so the queens could get lifted pretty soon. That will go down. The spore caller will go down exceptionally quickly. And great lifts on those queens there. All of the queens are pretty much going to die now. There's less than nothing they can do about it. Although, are deciding, um, in control deciding to pull back. And there's just some zerglings up here for regret, just making sure no third base does go down. The hydrisk then has just finished up for regret and he is getting the extended range on the hydras but as a very very wise move in control has got his robotics facility on the way so i'd imagine he's now going to transition straight into stalker and that's really what this play and opening has forced regret to do and that's if a protoss player goes for this early stargate and keeps on the pressure as he is then it forces the zerg player to get hydralisks out and what a Hydralisk really, really, really bad against is Colossus. So, Wise, again, in a very, very good play, the Spire now coming down for a grab, which he will need if Colossus do come out, which I would imagine they will at least at some point, certainly. But actually, a Twilight Council on the way. And a War Prisoner as well. So, basically, Regret's realised that there isn't much in the way of army for Regret, and In Control can capitalise on that by. Dropping in the main base, 
I mean, the front is pretty well secured. He's got a couple of Hydralisks, a couple of Zerglings, but this looks like a big push coming in now, and he might go straight for the third base. I mean, if he goes for the third base while using this War Prism just to drop in the main, then he can do a lot of damage, and a Dark Shrine coming down. Now, the Dark Shrine, I'll imagine, is just going to be used for Immortals because he knows there's Spore Crawlers at every single base. There is literally no way those... DTs will be able to do any damage to the main. They could actually, that's a lie. If they're dropped in, they could do a lot of damage because they could either just snipe down that spore caller, which I don't even think would detect them from this side, but even if it did, there's just one queen there. And that could get focused down by a Dark Templar drop very, very easily. Just the five gateways at the moment. Krenobi is still going down on the forge on plus one ground attack. And if we take a look in here, there's some sentries, so he's actually going to do a sentry drop now. I like that. I like sentry drops. I think they're good. You can force field this ramp, as he does appear to be doing so. So once this force field goes down on the ramp, there that can be held pretty much indefinitely now, because these sentries have a lot of energy on them. Each one enough just for one force field. Actually being a bit late, and now warping in zealots, so obviously the zealots can do a lot of damage, and... Oh, that's good positioning of these overlords and overseers just to give vision of the high ground. But again, these force fields just going down. A big force moving into counterattack into the third base. The drop isn't going to do too much damage. This Voidway and Phoenix, uh, no Phoenix yet, but just going to pick off some overlords. That does supply block um, regret. And now moving in into this third base, but there's a lot of units there for regret. They're in control. is going to be forced back, but this main base push has done a lot of damage. Just those um, plus one Zerglings, uh, Zealots rather, just eating their way through those drones and the poor drones are going to die a horrible death. Dark Templar are in now and they are just going to focus fire down the spore crawlers but there's just so many units here. There's, they will get one-shotted by the roaches. Although this could be perfect timing. They might move out actually in time and I don't think Regret's noticed it. And if this army moves out now and unfortunately attacking that Zergling so he will know now that the Dark Templar are there None managed to go down, but it's, again, just buying him some time and time and regret taking down the gold base. And this is good. It's a bit of a risky play. Um, in control is still left down, just only now taking his third base. And if he gets this fourth bolt, um, if regret gets the fourth gold base down, which I don't think he will, these dark templars will snipe. But the cancel does go off, which is good. Again, those dark templars are just doing a lot of damage to all the um, roaches and overseers are on their way in now. The phoenixes could target them down, but there's two, so it would take a while. And it looks like in control is just looking to counterattack, Or maybe not. Maybe going to move back. And I think that's a better move to be honest. And Immortal is on the way out. And that's perfect because this is a very roach heavy army. The Corrupt is going to do nothing. There's no Colossus out. Now like a fool I said if you force a Zerg player to go Hydralisks. You then make Colossi because they counter them so effectively. But in control is showing me why he's a professional StarCraft 2 player. And... Um, I'm not, because the way he's playing this out is very, very effective. He's made um, Sonic Regret go for those Corruptors almost instinctively from the metagame, and in response to that, obviously, they can do nothing. They're taking up supply and resources, which in control can deal with. The remaining army is just getting destroyed by the Immortal, which is trying to get focused down. And, I mean, there's actually a lot of units coming in. This is an awful lot of units. The Overlord's coming in just to maybe um, take some damage and there we go, Regret 1. It was a GG from In Control. So that was very, very impressive. I would imagine that if I was in Regret's position, I would not be regretting a thing. I would be very, very happy with this game because I just beat a pro player. So DTs were just positioned around the map. The gold base was about to finish anyway, so it was a pretty good game. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. If you did, of course, as always, hit that lovely subscribe button. Quite a few of my casts are actually being uploaded to StarCraft2Cast.com. So that's a really great site. Check it out. Also, they've got an iPhone app and an iPad app and an Android app, I think. Basically, it just is updated daily with all of the great casts which are put out there. I mean, check it out. And, I mean, obviously, it's fantastic. So click subscribe if you enjoyed. As always, give me some comments on the stream if you think it's good. If you want me to cast any particular games, by all means send them to me at sc2england.com.
at hobmail.co.uk. And one thing I would like some opinions on, and please put them in the comment box on this video, is that this game I cast as I watched it the first time through. I just was going at it, so I probably missed some things. But I think, kind of looking back, I've done it a few times before, it comes out very, very exciting, in my opinion. I get more excited over the game because I don't know what's going to happen. But obviously I do miss things, so I mean, give me your opinion if you prefer me doing it as a off the bat as I watched it the first time because you enjoy the excitement let me know but likewise if you prefer I just had all my facts and figures sorted out beforehand um, let me know that as well because obviously I want to try and cater to what people are looking for in a stream so thank you very much for watching and catch you soon